session is by Andreas. He will talk about the disk image builder. Andreas, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Um, this talk is about disk image builder and creating operating system images with this tool. Um, before defining what an operating system image is, let's have a spot. Let our, let have a spot to the history. Whoops, sorry, that was too much. Once upon a time, operating system images looked like this. Anybody, any idea what it is? Hmm? Yes, exactly, from uh, six, uh, Commodore 64, about 30 years old. So um, this type of data is something like um, I want to talk about. So this was about eight kilobytes, and typically these uh, days, uh, the modern operating system are much bigger and stored on disks. But in principle, it's the same data. Um, two sentences about me. So I'm currently involved in mostly three projects. The latest project is my uh, do-it-yourself CNC router, which I built these little wooden things there. It turned out that this is mostly a software project I never thought about, but the most of the time you sit in front of the computer and try to do the cut and the cam and get things correct. Um, then I have uh, the RM2, it's an open source requirements management project which I'm working on. And since about a year, I'm core developer for OpenStack Disk Image Builder. And this is why I'm here today. My agenda, so I hope I will finish in about 30 minutes. It, this is really an introduction talk to Disk Image Builder. So it's, it's only, I, I picked only two things out which I want to explain a little bit deeper, but it's mostly really introduction what you can do with it. So the green, green lines, it's really introduction, and then these things are a little bit um, detailed, a little bit more detailed. Oops, sorry, I have to. So an operating system image is mostly something like an operating system uh, in one format, maybe uh, uh, as stored on disk, as an image, which means as a file somewhere uh, on a disk. Uh, other names are also golden images and template OS images, and typically they are used in environments like um, cloud images or virtualization platforms. Um, this is one way to build operating system images, which means put an USB stick or something like this DVD into your computer, boot it, and you will get sooner or later something like a picture like this, and you have to go through the whole setup of installation and image. At, uh, um, you have to uh, um, specify which packages you have to install and so on. Um, I think everybody knows how to, uh, and mostly did it already, I think, or? Yes, so this is so the typical way if you get a new computer, you put this. Then there is another way. This is using a tool which builds you an image. So there are typically for each uh, operating system, there comes a tool with you which, which just puts up an operating system on the disk, mostly as a, as a tree structure. There is a... Um, Example for that bootstrap, so you just enter this thing with that bootstrap uh, stretch and dot, and then you have, I don't know, two minutes, three minutes later, you have a complete Debian system on your, um, in your directory. So these are the, let me say, the historical things. Um, the problem with this is for each operating system, Something like this, for, for, for each operating system you need a special tool, you need a special configuration, and what you um, end up, so if you need a couple of them, you end up simply something like this. For all uh, of your environment, for all different operating systems, distributions, architectures, you have one configuration file, one tool, and then you, you run it and create something like a disk image. And Disk image builder tries to solve this problem. It is something like uh, it takes up one, only one configuration, and builds really a couple of things, or a couple of 
um, architectures a couple of target systems from one configuration on one host system. Here are some examples that you can get a feeling for this. So you can just have, for example, if I'm to, to install a Debian a minimal system, uh, a Debian minimal or Fedora minimal, CentOS minimal, and so on. And of, uh, also what you can do is not only um, creating virtual machines, but also Docker images from it. What is under the hood is something like really um, the system image, the system tools for this specific operating system are really used. So RPM or uh, APT or DBKG or something like this. So this is done inside. But you as a user of Disk Image Builder, did, uh, you don't uh, even see this. Um, the support matrix of this, so it's, it's really astonishing how much you can build. So you can build mostly all the mainline things and you can even build different architectures. And this is really done, really you can cross, cross to it. So you can have, for example, one MD64 and build something like for a PowerPC, an image from PowerPC. Or you can have an Ubuntu and then you can uh, uh, generate an uh, OpenSUSE for it. So it's really universal and uh, yes, you, you see the, the bubble that over there, this is something like under the hood. So under the hood it's something, uh, it uses QEMO to run the target operating, so the post scripts, uh, the, the binaries on the host system, which gives you a really complete, for example, complete installed binaries. Um, yeah, some environments, so this is which I've really tested, so VMware, OpenStack, KVM, uh, Amazon, Docker. Uh, this is what I tested. There are also possibilities really to use it as a bare metal. So you can use these images, create these images, and then put it with some specific um, method on a bare metal and can also use this, uh, yes, this one image or this one based on this one configuration that you provide. The disk image builder itself, it's something like a modular system. So what it has is something like elements and for each function or each function block is put into one element. Uh, for example, this Debian minimal is one element, VM is one element, Puppet Master is one element. You can think about hundreds which are come directly with, with, um, with disk image builder. And there are a lot of um, these elements also in the internet. So for example, if you want to install an image for a Raspberry Pi, you can grab it from the internet, specify Raspberry Pi, and you add an image for the Raspberry Pi. Some example elements, so really it's a small, a small set of examples. Yes, you can see, so I don't want to go into detail here. So there are a lot of things you can just put into your VM directly during creation. Um, some words, what is an element? So an element is mostly something like configuration, so a set of, so it, it, no, let me start in this way, it resists in one directory and it's a, collection of configuration, configuration um, files and uh, directories. And this, there, in this directory, there live some scripts. So I have here an example, or a very small example. Um, an element itself can be dependent on other elements. So you can just have a small text file where you can all list the other elements which are also then included. Um, the package installed, so this is a, these are the packages which, which are installed during the creation of the, of the uh, operating system image. And as you see, you can just put the name here, and also you can have something like um, different ways of um, specifying names. So for example, there's also some way for different uh, distributions, because the distribution typically name their, their packages in a different way. 
then there is typically some, so there are at least, let me say, uh, there are about seven, six, seven stages during this build process. For example, you, you just prepare things, then they are installed, um, then um, the bootloader is installed, then the cleanup is run, and so on. There, so there are seven different stages of this, and each of these stages are put into, an, in, um, into a separate directory, and the scripts in this, in this directory are then executed at the uh, appropriate stages. So for example, in the environment, you can set some names which are then picked up by other elements, or in the, um, <coughs> sorry, uh, in the directories themselves, um, there are something like scripts, like, like these things. So this is really the, the where, where all the, the work happens. Okay, um, then I want to talk a little bit about the block device layer because um, this is an important point. So um, there are a lot. So yes, um, there are a lot of things you have to really to put into the operating system directly. So, um, for example, um, adding an, um, a package that can be done later with the configuration management system, so in a golden image. But you won't want to, for example, to play around with your partition table, with, um, with your LVM, and so on, um, later on. So this is something like you have to do first, directly in the operating system, during the build of the image. Um, one year or something like this ago, um, the complete block device layer was about, it exists exactly one image and um, with one partition and that's all. And um, yes, there was a, lot of, well, was a lot of work done during this last uh, year to implement different ways. So what we did is something like we uh, leveled, <coughs> we did some levels so we have something like, for example, one level uh, in this block device layer inside the disk image builder, which provides disk space. The, the typical way is to have a loop device, so which provides local loop, uh, local disk, but uh, other things are possible which are but no, not yet installed. Um, then there is a way, the, the level one thing, this is where mostly the complete work is done. So this is something like um, mostly combining things, what you get from here. So for example, you have two loop devices you can put in, uh, in one, one partition table on the other in, in LVM and whatsoever. You can think everything or what you want. And what is, what is important, you can put it um, there, uh, this level really into itself. So what you can do is, for example, you can have a partition, and on top of the partition you can have an LVM, on, and um, on, based on this LVM you can have, for example, a crypt, crypt setup, and so on, and so on. Where I can say that the crypt setup is not currently not, not implemented. So it's, you get something like a stack. Um, yes, the other ways are mostly something like, okay. <laughs> the other ways are mostly something like, um, Yes, typically what needs to be done, so you need to do a, a file system on this. Uh, the, the, it needs to be mounted. It needs to uh, end the FS step ending because we have to, of course, uh, pass this over to the real system. One example that you can maybe have a uh, think of how this is configured. So the complete configuration is done by means of a YAML file. It's one YAML file where you, you can describe the complete hierarchy for, for, the, um, disk, for the block device layer. And here's one thing, I think it's, it's mostly um, self-explaining. So you have a local loop there, which is uh, your dev loop device handling. Uh, inside this, there is a partitioning done. Uh, inside the partitioning is done with the master boot record. And um, yes, there is, for example, one partition, which is primary, and so on, and so on, and the whole thing is done. So this is really a very, very simple uh, example to have, to get you an impression. So typically, if you have something like a logical volume inside the partition table, and you have five or six logical volumes, this is, gets really length, lengthy. But, uh, so everything is possible here. This is just an impression to give you uh, an idea 
what happens. Okay, yes. Um, then there was a time where it comes to this writing this uh, MBR, this master boot record. These are uh, 72 bytes, which has to be at the correct position. So I, I, brought, uh, I did a DD there that you um, have something like uh, what is, so most of them are also uh, zeros. And um, of course, the typical way is uh, look at the internet, grab something which is available and use it. And um, we discussed it really uh, on the, the development side, and we really didn't find anything which, was, which we can use because all these tools are either not really thought um, for, for scripting or they are, yes, they're doing a lot of things they shouldn't. For example, we had to look at this parted, so this is a GNU parted pro, um, thing. Uh, one clash, but we, can, we, we could around this, it was uh, license because this is only GNU. It's really a GPL, not LGPL, so it's a little bit, and the, the whole um, um, disk image builder is under, under Apache, so we have something like a, maybe a problem there if we, have, if we would have to, um, used the appropriate libraries there. Uh, calling Parted would be possible, but Parted itself does a lot of things, which, in my opinion, it shouldn't. So it just not only writes these bytes there, but also some, do something like um, calls the kernel for updating the partition tables, it calls UDEV, it tries to optimize things, and this is really what what's, what's comes into mind where we really sorted it out. It tries to optimize things. So it looks, for example, into the kernel, uh, which are the buffer sizes of the disk which I want to create, and tries to optimize, tries to align them. But currently, we are on the host system and targeting for a completely different system. And uh, we have, I have um, measurements that um, using Parted gave, at some, part, uh, at some point, um, a performance um, for about only, uh, yes, half the performance. So you lose about 30 to 40% performance if you don't align correctly. So this is why we really <laughs> um, implemented this thing as in Python, in 150 lines of code. So know it there, know it's tested. If you want to write, <laughs> you like something like a uh, master boot record, you can pick it there and you can use it. <laughs> okay, so then maybe some development insights. Um, this is uh, the OpenStack, is an open, um, disk, disk image builder is an OpenStack. Um, project, it's a part of a project, and it's from from the size here, it's really small. So it's about 1,200,000 lines of code, and it's about 7,000 lines Bash and Python mostly. The, the new block device layer, which was created about now, yes, during the last year, is about 3,000 lines of code. What is a little bit problematic, what I think is um, this. Um, that, that there are really many, many adoptions. So um, let me say something like this. Every third line is something like, if you have this system, we know that there is this problem and we have to, to work around this. So this is a little bit problematic, but for such a tool which aims to be universal, you have to do something like this, or you cannot just support it. Yes, also the design should be improved. I think we did already do a lot of things there. For example, this adding this block device layer because before it was something like spread around. So each element has something, has an own idea about it. And now it's really centralized, but there are other things which could be uh, optimized. What is sometimes really annoying to me is the slow development cycle. So you have your great idea, put it into Garrett, and nobody cares. <laughs> so this is really something like really strange. And um, it takes weeks or months that somebody else picks it up and have a look at it. 
but this is, I think, in my opinion, I'm not really, really sure about the other OpenStack project, but this is for, for, dic, dip, dic, sorry, for disk image builder, it, this is really a problem. So we have, I think, one patch outstanding for EFI boot, which is mostly two years old now. And yes, it's, it's, really, it's really hard. So even, um, so if you have some spare time, <laughs> You're invited to have a look at this, so everybody can can also review it and uh, um, have their have their own thought there. And the last thing that is a little bit related to this is that all the the different maintainers or the different contributors really focus on their own development. So they just want to, for example, feature X, and they and they just really try to put it in and um, even if it's really not not in the, um, the right place if it's if it doesn't really fit into it if it's if, um, and if, even if it's really sometimes it's you get something like a mess so it's, it's we have just to say no not this way whoops that was one one recap so as I said in the beginning this uh, disk image builder, one configuration, all targets. But this is just for an ideal, ideal world. As I said, there are a lot of problems. And there is one um, matrix build. So there's something like an element which in turn builds Docker images, which in turn then use disk image builder to build all the other things. So what you have is something like really something like a um, building matrix and you don't have to read all the things but it's just to give you an impression on the top uh, there are the hosts so that it's, it starts with center 7 Debian buster Jesse stretch and so on Fedora open source and this is not really finished so it's, it goes on on and here there is a target uh, there's a target so um, which ones you try to build and I do this each some weeks to get an impression how stable it is and how uh, where where is some work, um, as you see, there are a lot of greens. So there are a lot of things you can really build, but you have really to take care that some um, just do not work. So, for example, we have there are some problems like um, uh, it's not not here, but for example, open source. Just just to pick one example, there is. Um, um, something like uh, that there are some no scripts for example to build up-to-date Debian systems so you just cannot do this because they're just missing something yes but the problem second fourth five and six the missing script yes is usually you just need to do a simling because yes the, the bootstrap is using the same file for basically every distribution now and it just um, uh, I just repeat what you what you said um, to get. So so you said that for uh, two, four, five, and seven, uh, six, there is only the need to create a, a soft link to uh, some other uh, already existing version. Yes, you're right. Um, I have no idea why this is done in this way. The problem is that let me let me say you as a user just picks. Uh, the things and try once to ex wants to execute the uh, the program. You can just disk image builder. You can just install on mostly every um, distribution, and you don't want to to be get root and try to to uh, get rid of or add some new some links. Okay, um, some advantages um, is speed. So uh, if you have really set up a, a good uh, environment, for example, having a HTTP cache or a package cache, RPM Debian cache, the complete build of an operating system image is done typically in two to three minutes if you don't have something like a big thing. So if you concentrate on the minimal things. Um, you have one configuration for all targets, and as I said, it supports many, many distributions, architectures, and hosts and target systems. Um, 
the next one, it's really something like, uh, yes, um, is as seen that only a limited set of function it's testing during the CCI itself. So the CI in Garrett, it's, uh, in OpenStack, it's Zool. And it's mostly, I think, uh, all things are run on the up-to-date Ubuntu version and up-to-date um, Fedora version. And that's mostly all. Um, the rest is something like not really tested during the CI process itself. And what is also a disadvantage is that at least currently, so you can build Docker images with this, but um, it's not really optimized for it. So when you get, uh, you get images, you can use as, a Docker, uh, as Docker images, but um, they are in size not really comparable to something like a minimal system. So there are a lot of packages installed which can be removed there. So there, there has to be some work to, uh, yes, to do this open. Sorry. Um, yes, this I want to really to, to emphasize. So what to put into a, a system and what not. Um, this is a little, a little bit of learning of the last some years from my side. And um, the, the thing is, be as general and minimal as possible and, uh, for, the, um, for the system. Don't install something like uh, applications which you just need in 10% of your machines. That's not needed. Of course, what you want is you have to install, the, for example, hardware-dependent things, so uh, hardware drivers or so, which are needed to build, uh, to, to boot the system. But be as really minimal as possible. Um, the second point is, yes, I learned it on the hardware, let me say, so um, don't do hardening this early. The hardening is a, it's a steady process, so hardening should be done later on. Because typically what you do is you have something like a general image and you don't know what you install later on in this. Um, for example, you, you have an image and later on you add, for example, a Postgres database in it. When, where, where you want to uh, harden it. So if you have the, the, the image hardened, the Postgres isn't hardened. And also, um, yes, you have to really to... to um, to see what you want to, to do um, with this, uh, yes, and when you have to do the hardening. So the best practice I uh, see is that you have something like a puppet or a chef or whatsoever configuration management system provided by security, or there are also some, some projects in the internet, and they should run, don't know, each day. Because, for example, if you update a package, um, the hardening may be overwritten. And the latest point is uh, what I s already said. Um, do the operator, do the, the, the disk layout during operation image build directly. Okay, so this is you know, a general rule of thumb to things as late as possible. Okay, that's from my side. I think I'm time. Uh, they, we have about 10 minutes question and answers time. So if you have questions, yes? Yeah, uh, do you have an, anything going on for a set of file system support in the images? Uh, sorry, I didn't get this. Did you? Do you have a... Ah, okay. Um, the question is um, if there is a plan to have CFS, CFS, CFS in the um, file system. Uh, currently, there is no such a plan. Not, not CF. It's not CF. <coughs> CF. CFS. Right file system. C. C, ah, C. Sorry. Sorry. CFS. No. Also, no, no ideas. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Yes, please. What is the main difference of your project compared to, say, Hacker, which also creates uh, images from a description? Doesn't it? 
Um, I don't, sorry, I don't know this project. Uh, so the, 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 the question was, uh, what's the difference between, uh, between this project and other projects like Packer? Uh, and I cannot say that much to it because I have no idea about Packer. So it's uh, hard to say. Yes, please. You know that there are, there are many patches rotting basically in Gary. How many core developers are in the project? Um, we are currently, let me say, two and a half. So uh, there is one guy called Ian. Uh, he's, in, uh, he's sitting in Australia, so it's a little bit hard to synchronize. And there is uh, one, uh, yes, one additional woman, which is something like she did. She, she seldom really writes something, but she's um, trying to test things. So this is something like uh, yes, we are only two, three, which is not that much. Yes, please. Uh, is this image builder available in Fedora, Deven, and so on, or is this an internal tool for OpenStack? What's, what's the target audience? Uh, the target is, uh, the tar um, so the question is, um, what is the target from OpenStack? Is this only for OpenStack? Uh, the target from this image builder, is it only OpenStack, or are there only, uh, can you use it as Fedora, or Debian, something like this? Um, this image builder is rolled out with OpenStack, but you can install it on mostly any <coughs> uh, distribution. So for example, Ubuntu and Debian have uh, their own packages. You can just apt get install. I'm not really sure about Fedora, um, but what you can do is yeah, it's on, also available with PyPy, so you can just uh, install, uh, use pip, install this image builder, and you have, or you have it, and you can use it. It's about, about Two minutes. Yes, please. Do you also provide the disk image builder as an element for disk image builder? Um, there is an outstanding patch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So, uh, so this was my idea. Uh, I created this patch um, to have exactly this, to have uh, um, inside disk image builder an element you can just build and we have a, a test or development for disk image builder. Yes, please. Uh, sorry, I didn't get this. Is there any elements that you can use and you can create an image directly for mining, like the output the Raspberry, or you have the puppet master and you can use it for mining? Um, no, this is um, the question was: Is there some ready-to-use element for data mining? Is that correctly? Yeah. Um, what what is there? There's a puppet. When I, which, which when I uh, when I get your question correct, there's a puppet master element for this one. Yes, for example, puppet master element. Yes, it installs and completes the puppet master. It installs the complete puppet master. There. Yes. No, no, it's not. Yes, please. Yes, see you. See you. Um, GPT. Uh, um, the question is, uh, what about GPT, um, the partition table you think about? Um, there's really ongoing um, a patch, which is, I hope, something like maybe next or maybe in two weeks it's, it's there and will be uh, in the next release. I'm not really sure if we have some time for, if there's some time for my questions. Um, maybe you at the top. I have a question about the installation process. Um, for Packer, the target machine is emulated like you build for, for VirtualBox or for KVM. And it's setting up the VM with the hypervisor and setting up a block device. <coughs> but you have to say, like, I need to install 20 gigabytes, 5 gigabytes of this later on in the post process you have to do to shrink. Simulate the emulate target platform or device. 
was just like the Debian only use uh, the bootstrap for that. So the, the bootstrap you just install in your, your directory and not. Um, okay, okay. Um, okay, when I when I understood it correctly, it's something like um, how does a disk image builder uh, he, um, uses the different ways of um, storing images, like a raw image, or what? What? Or what? So okay, um, there are currently so internally it it works uh, in a raw. So it has a dupe device. It has a raw image, and. Um, after the process, it automatically converts it to something you give at the command line. So typically you have something like uh, QCOW, BMDK, TAR, whatsoever, what you, what you want. But everything is handled locally, it's not virtual environment. Exactly, everything is handled locally. Okay. Yes. Yes, on the top. Um, um, the, the idea, uh, the question was, um, why does Disk Image Builder not pick up something like an existing project for describing the partitioning um, the block device itself? Correctly, um, open speaking, I didn't find something. So if you can point me to something, I'm really happy. Um, this was also really so my my first touch with Disk Image Builder. I, looked through the internet exactly for finding something which gave me uh, the whole bunch of, of things uh, in, uh, yes, which, are now, which can be done with Disk Image Builder now, but I didn't find anything. So this was one reason to put it there. Okay, please. What about GPT partitioning? Oh, we had this question already. It's about uh, GPT partitioning. Uh, there is currently really a um, patch Outstanding, and there is a lot of work on, done on this, and I, I hope it's maybe merged next week or so. Okay, any questions? Okay. Um, you recommended against uh, doing partitioning yourself. Why is that? Uh, the question is uh, that why I recommend against partitioning. Yeah. No, it's not outside the disk image builder. But, uh, I'm doing it outside. Is it bad or why isn't it not recommended to do it like that? Uh, sorry, I didn't get was, We should do the partitioning and the GPT or MBR within the image. Yes, because it's something like very basic for the image and you won't want to change thing, these things later on. So I, for example, I would I have something like a problem with it, doing and uh, setting up an LVM with Puppet. So maybe it's possible, but I, from my opinion, this is not really the, the correct time. So do things. Um, oh, I'm not really sure if, if it's. Well, I'm if I get you. Yes, you, uh, okay, you, yes, you can do this also. So you can do, do this something like a partition-less thing. So you can just use an image, a raw image. This is also, this is also is possible. And then you can just put it into an image, yes. One question or not? Okay, time is up. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>